Hi there, my name is Caesar, and I'm here from the Powerhouse Science Center with another science story time. This week we are going to be reading Zoo in the Sky. Zoo in the Sky is about constellations that you can see in the night sky that look like animals. A constellation is kind of like a dot-to-dot -dot picture made up of stars, but the book will kind of explain that, so let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, Zoo in the Sky, a book of animal constellations. Written by Jacqueline Mitten and illustrated by Christina Ballit. When the sun sets, darkness falls. The stars appear one by one. Then the sky turns to a picture puzzle. What is hiding in the pattern of the stars? Some people say they only see squares and squiggles, lines and loops. But imagine hard and the sky comes to life. The star patterns make a wing here, a tail there a twinkling eye, even a scorpion stinger. Skywatchers long, long ago imagined a whole zoo of animals. They shine there still when you are under the magic of the spell of the nighttime sky. So yeah, it kind of explained what a constellation is, but it also told us a very important thing, which is if you just make a line between two stars, you're not really going to see a constellation. In order to see these imaginary pictures, you have to, well, imagine them. So let's go ahead and start with our first story about the great bear. The great bear quietly pads her way around the north pole of the sky. Every day she makes a trip. Two bright stars across her back point straight to Polaris, the north star. Keen off Polaris by his tail, the little bear swings around behind her. You won't see bears quite the same anywhere else. Real life bears don't have such long tails. And we can see our two pairs and we can see the star Polaris, the North Star, which is a part of the constellation, the Little Dipper, or Ursa Minor, the Little Bear. Countless stars light the Milky Way. Along the silvery path, with its wings outstretched, flies the swan. On July and August nights, he soars from east to west across the sky. It takes him from dusk till dawn. His eyes gleam with a twin star yellow and blue, called Alberio. He needs a good eye to keep a sharp lookout for the cunning fox, which runs behind him, beneath him, looking for his dinner. And we can see the constellation, the swan. If you're looking for it, it kind of looks like a T or a cross shape. And just like the story says, it's right where the Milky Way is, which kind of looks like a cloud of stars in the night sky. The scorpion has a nasty sting in his tail. Beware, as he scuttles across the Milky Way. His tail is curved around, and he is waving his fearsome claws. Antares, a blood-red star, glows at his heart. But the wolf nearby is not afraid. After all, he is not such a friendly creature himself. And here we can see that blood-red star, Antares, that the story was talking about, in the middle of our scorpion constellation, and the wolf. Leo the Lion is king of the beasts and lord of the sky. In February and March, he looks down from a throne high up in the heavens. Stars in his mane shine like jewels in a crown. His brightest star lies close to his heart. The star's name is Regulus, which means the little king. And you can see here the brightest star Regulus in the constellation Leo the Lion. All right. The great dog is chasing the hare, but knows he can never catch it. This dog is a splendid, star-studded creature. His brightest star, Sirius, outshines all others in the night sky. Sirius means scorching one, a good name for a white-hot star, but spot it low in the night sky, and Sirius flashes all the colors of the rainbow, like a diamond glittering in the sunlight. So here we can see the constellation, the dog, and we can see in it Sirius, which is one of the brightest stars in the night sky we can see. Deep in the southern sky, the glittering goldfish swim alongside where the, ocean, where the good ship Argo sails an ocean of stars. The flying fish gives chase in fun, soaring out of the waves. Now take care, he warns, we must not get caught. But the fish are safe in their starry sea. They will never be anyone's dinner. 
A zoo without birds would never do. In the sky, there's a whole flock parading by the South Pole. Tails on display, the proud peacock and bird of paradise show off to anyone who watches. The toucan's glory is his beak, studded with an orange star. The crane peers at them all, stretching his long neck. Red and blue stars shine on his back. So these stars are in the southern pole, which means they're a little bit harder for us to see up here in North America. But there's still constellations down there as well. The long scalily body, the crimson-eyed dragon, coils around the north pole of the heavens. Take care. He might breathe fire. You won't find a dragon like him in an ordinary zoo. But the starry sky is magic. And on fine, sparkling night, who knows? You just might fall under its spell. So this is Draco. This is actually one of my favorite constellations. He's a dragon. He's in the north part of the sky, kind of near the North Pole. So he kind of looks like an S. So look for an S shape in the sky, and you might see a dragon. All right. The end. So that was the last story we're going to read from Zoo in the Sky. If you like learning about the animals, real and not real, you can see in the night sky. Tonight, maybe go outside and try and find some of them for yourself. It's kind of hard to find constellations, especially if it's your first time looking. So just practice. And if you can't find any of the ones we talked about, that's okay. Just make your own up. Draw the stars you see and draw lines between them until they look like your favorite animal, whether that's real or not real. Thank you for joining us for this week's story time. If you, I hope you join us next week for another science story time. In the meantime, if you like this video, don't forget to share it and stay safe.